A while back on my channel, I showed you how I added this light by my side door on a concrete block wall. As you can see, it looks like it's been there for years. If you have not seen that video, you can find the link to the video at the end of this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add an exterior LED light, or in my case, a motion activated LED light. What you're going to see applies for one and two story homes where you have attic access. You're going to need the light that you'll be installing. Electrical box like you see here, this is a heavy duty one. You can also use a blue one like you see over here. You're going to need a junction box, preferably with built-in Romex clamps like you see right here. Also a cover for the junction box. Half inch cable staples that you see right back there. You're going to need wire nuts. I have yellow and red. And you're going to need enough Romex wire, 12-2 or 14-2, to complete the job. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is trace out the electrical box on your soffit. You want to make sure that there's no rafters or the ends of your trusses in the area where you're going to be making the hole. So right here I know for a fact it's hollow. You could use a stud finder. Tap on it with your hand. Just make sure you're not on where the wood is. If it is, just move the location over a little bit more. To cut the hole out, I'm going to be using a jigsaw, so I'll need a starter hole. And as you can see, the box fits in that hole very nicely. With the hole cut in the soffit, I'm going to take the Romex cable, insert the hole length from the outside going in. And if there's something blocking between the roof and the top plate, you're going to have to drill a hole through it in order to get the wire to go from the soffit into the attic. So I have to take one of the knockouts out of the box. You do that easily using a slot screwdriver. Now take the Romex cable, slide it into the electrical box, then push the electrical box into the opening in the soffit, and then secure it using the two screws in the bottom of the electrical box. Right here you can see the box tight against the soffit and the cable hanging out. Now what I like to do, even though it's a plastic box and you do not ground plastic boxes, for this type of a box I generally put a ground screw or any other screw to help secure the cable so it doesn't pull out of the box easily towards the attic side. So you can see the screw right here with the ground wire wrapped around it. Make sure the wire wraps clockwise around the screw before you tighten it. Now I'm going to take this metal plate that's used to mount the light and I'm going to screw it into the plastic electrical box. It has a ground wire connected to it. The ground wire is going to be connected to the ground of the Romex cable in the electrical box. Now I'm going to connect the black wire from the light to the black of the Romex in the electrical box. And then the white is going to connect to the white of the Romex in the electrical box. With the wires connected, now I'm going to complete the installation by screwing the light fixture tight against the electrical box. Years ago we had spotlights like you can see over here that used incandescent lamps. So a double spot would be drawing around 300 watts. And if you had a triple spotlight, you could be drawing as much as 450 watts. So if you were going to be tapping your new light into an existing line, you would have to be very careful that you do not overload the branch circuit. The good thing is today we have exterior lights that are almost always LED. So they're going to be using one tenth the power output for the same light output. So by having the LED light instead of an incandescent, you're not going to have to worry about which circuit you're going to be tapping into to power your light. The light that I purchased has an equivalent light output of around 300 watts, and it only uses 30 watts. When you go into your attic, you're going to find Romex cables like you see here. They may be buried under insulation. If your home is older, you're not going to have a plastic jacket on the cable you're going to have a gray cloth jacket like you see right here. 
Now the next thing you're going to ask is how do I know which one of those Romex cables out of all those in the attic that I'm going to be handling, which one I can use to power my outside light. And it's very simple to do. First, you're going to go to your breaker panel and you're going to turn off all the double pole breakers, which are 240 volts. You can see what they look like right here. And you're also going to turn off the single pole breakers if they exceed 20 amps or if they're a dedicated circuit for a refrigerator, dishwasher, disposal, microwave oven, pump, etc. You do not want to tap into those circuits. We're looking for a lighting circuit or a circuit used for receptacles. When you have all the correct circuit breakers off, you're going to take a voltage sensing pen like you see here, 15 or 20 bucks at Home Depot, turn it on, go in the attic, take the tool and you're going to run it right along each side of the Romex cables. Separate them by a couple of inches when you do it, pull them apart, and you're going to be looking for a detection. When it's detected, you're going to hear this. And in this case, a red LED comes on. So you're going to go to each one of these cables. Many are going to show nothing because the breaker's off, but you're going to find cables that are on, and those are the ones that you're going to want to use. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn off the one that you just found, keeping the sensor close, have a person turn the breaker off when they find the correct one. They're going to take notice what the rating is on the breaker. If it's a 15 amp breaker, you're going to be tapping into this line as I'm showing you in a minute using 14-2 wire. And if it's a 20 amp breaker, you're going to use 12-2 Romex. If you don't want to use this branch circuit, you can go along Keep checking other cables. When you have a detection, turn the circuit breaker off until the detection goes away. You'll know which one you have, and you may want to use that branch circuit instead. So it is very easy to find a cable that you can use to power your outside light. Remember, before you do any of this probing on these wires, make sure all the wall switches in your home are in the off position. You do not want to detect a wire that is switch controlled. So make sure the switches are off before performing any detection. Now it's very important that the cable has about four inches of play that you can use when you put the junction box in. You don't wanna cut a cable that you have no room to pull it in to make your connections. Okay, with the power turned off, this wire that we're going to be tapping into was cut. And then I remove the outer jacket, cutting lengthwise using a utility knife blade, trimmed it off clean. Took the conductors on both sides, stripped off about 5 eighths of an inch of insulation around 14 millimeters from the black and white conductors. This is a 14 gauge wire connected to a 15 amp circuit breaker. Now the wire going to the light you can see is a little bit thicker. This is 12 gauge and this is intended for 20 amp circuit breakers but you can use 12 gauge with a 15 amp breaker or a 20 amp breaker. So now I'm going to take the junction box, reach inside of here, screwdriver, and just bend, keep going back and forth until they pop out. So I'm going to be removing two on one side and one on the other. You want to take the clamp, make sure it goes over the white part of the wire here, the jacket, like that, looks good and do the same for the other two. With everything in the correct position, as you see here, take the screw here and there, tighten down securely. With each one of the cables secured, next thing you wanna do is place a ground screw into either one of the holes, there's one here, one back there. Next, you're going to take a short section of bare copper wire. You could use a piece from the Romex cable that's left over. Make a loop using needle nose, all right, just reach around, just twist it, create what you see right here. And then you're going to slide it around the screw head and pull it like that. You're going to tighten that down securely. Purpose of doing this is in the event one of your connections comes loose on the black wires and touches the box, it will short circuit and trip the circuit breaker. If you don't have the wire in place, you can go in the attic and touch this box and get a very bad shock. Get all your ground wires together. Get 
all the ends lined up and then you're going to twist them all together. I'm trying to work around the camera so this is not easy. Camera's right in front of me. There you go. Make sure that everything has a nice twist. Get that out of there. Now for the ground, you could just give this a really good twist and just tuck it inside the box. Now there's really no need to have to put a wire nut on here if you do this tight, but I will put one anyway. Get this nice and tight. Push this down at the bottom of the box. Now you're going to take the white conductors, which is your neutral. Line all those up. Take your nut. Make sure it's really tight. Push that down and now do the blacks. Trim that little tip off. And right there is exactly what you're going to do. Very simple. Loosen the two screws. After this, you would turn the circuit breaker on and check your light. Now I'm going to go in the attic, connect mine up, and then I'll show you exactly what I did. Right over here, you can see where I came through the soffit with the wire. Comes in at the bottom right, and then it goes right against that joist for the ceiling. The wire is secured down the length of that joist using cable staples. Here you can see where the wire makes a turn and then it connects to the junction box that you're looking at right here. Here's a look inside that junction box at the connections. Okay, now let's turn the power on and take a look at the light. And here it is, plenty of light on the side of my house. No more cooking or walking to my trash can in the dark. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.